Welcome to the EQ8 Starter Lesson video. I'm Jenny Novinsky from the Electric Quilt Company, and I'm excited to show you the software. This lesson is also available in the Quick Start Guide that comes with EQ8. If you purchase the software in a box, you'll find it in the booklet on page 15. If you purchased EQ8 as a download, you can find the PDF for the Quick Start Guide on our support site. Let me show you where to find that. When you open EQ8, you'll see the home screen. To find the Quick Start Guide, over on the left under the big EQ8 logo, click on Learn. Then in the Learn section, click the Quick Start Guide. It will take you to our support site, and here you can download the PDF for the Quick Start Guide. I'm going to go back to the EQ8 screen and click on Get Started again. And we'll be back on the welcome screen for EQ8. Let's get started with our lesson. We're going to design a simple quilt together. So under Design Quilts, we'll choose the option that says Design a Quilt from Scratch. When I click that option, it will switch me to the quilt work table. Here on the New Quilt tab, we can choose the basic layout for the quilt that we'll be designing. For this lesson, we're going to use a standard horizontal layout. Next, we'll work our way across the tabs at the top. So click on Layout, and here we can set the basic characteristics of our quilt. We'll leave the number of blocks set to 4 and 4, but we'll change the size of the blocks. Click to put a check in the box next to keep width and height equal, and then change the size to six. You can highlight the number and type a new number, or you can use the slider bars to change the size. When working in EQ8, you're always designing in finished sizes. That means the size of the block or the quilt when all of the seams have been sewn. EQ8 will add the seam allowance for you when you print. Next, click the Borders tab at the top of the screen. Here in the ribbon, you can see all of the different border styles that are available. By default, it's set to the long horizontal style. Let's change it to corner blocks. And you can see that the border now has a little square in the corner. Right now, the border is one inch wide. Let's change that size to two inches. Again, you can highlight the number and type a new one, or you can use the slider bars to change the size. If I click directly on the bar here, it will change the size in quarter inch increments. Now we can move to the next tab at the top. So click on design, and then make sure that black tools is selected here in the ribbon. The set block tool is here in the palette, and this is what we can use to put blocks into the layout. The blocks shown here are the default blocks that every project starts with in EQ8. EQ8 also has a block library with over 6,000 blocks that you can use in your designs as well. Or you can draw your own blocks in EQ8 too. For now, we'll stick with the default blocks that are here for us. Click on the Ohio Star block to select it and then move your cursor over to the top left block space in the quilt. Click once and you'll see the block pop into that space. There are keyboard shortcuts available to make setting blocks faster. If you are on a Windows computer, hold down the control key, or if you are on a Mac, hold down the command key. And while you have that key held down on your keyboard, click on a block space and the whole layout will fill with the same block. Over in the Blocks palette, click on the default 9-patch chain block. There are also keyboard shortcuts available to set a block in every other space. If you are on a Windows computer, hold down the Alt key. If you're on a Mac, hold down the Option key and click in a block space. And you'll see that chain block is in every other space now. 
Let's save this quilt by adding it to the project sketchbook. Notice that right now at the top of the screen it says untitled. That means that this project has not been saved to the computer. When I add this quilt to the sketchbook, EQ8 will prompt me to save the project as well. Here on the left toolbar, you'll find the Add to Project Sketchbook button. It's the red notebook with the blue plus sign. Click that button. And here you'll see that I get a warning that this project file is not saved yet. Click OK. And now you'll have a Save As window where you can type a name for the project. Let's name this project My First EQ8 Project. and click the Save button. Now at the top of the screen, you'll see it says the project file name that we just typed rather than untitled. Now let's color the quilt with fabrics. In the ribbon, click on Fabric Tools and make sure the paintbrush tool is selected in the palette. Here you'll see the default fabrics the EQ8 comes loaded with. Just like there are default blocks, there are also default fabrics in a project. Use the horizontal scroll bar below the fabrics to see all the options available. Just like there is a block library with more options, there's also a fabric library with more fabric options for you to add to a project. You also could add your own fabrics by scanning them or by downloading fabric images from a manufacturer's website. Find a light blue fabric in the palette that you like and click on it to select it. Using the paintbrush tool, color one of the orange squares the light blue color. Continue clicking on orange squares until all of the squares are changed to the light blue fabric. Now let's try one of the other coloring tools available. In the palette, click the spray can tool, and then find a yellow fabric in the palette that you'd like to use. If you'd like to see a larger swatch of the fabric, you can click this little arrow here to detach the fabric preview, and then you'll see a larger swatch of the fabric over here. This little preview window can be moved or resized to wherever it's most convenient for you on your screen. Move your cursor over to one of the star points in one of the Ohio star blocks. The spray can tool colors all matching patches in a block at one time. So if I click on this blue triangle, all the matching blue triangles in the block will color at once. Color the rest of the Ohio stars in the same way. Now let's try the swap color tool. Select the tool in the palette and then choose an orange fabric. The swap color will change all matching patches in the entire quilt at once. So if I click on one of these orange triangles, all of the orange triangles will change to the fabric at once. Click the paintbrush tool again, and now choose a brown fabric. On the keyboard, hold down your control key or your command key, and click on one of the center squares in an Ohio star. Because we were using a keyboard shortcut, all matching squares changed at once. Now let's use this blue fabric that we first colored with and some other patches. Rather than scrolling through the palette to find the same fabric, we can use the eyedropper tool to automatically find it for us. Click the eyedropper tool on the palette and then click on the blue fabric in the quilt. You'll see the blue fabric automatically become selected for us. We're going to change all these small blue squares at once so switch to the swap color tool 
and then click on one of those small squares and they'll all change at once for us. In the palette, select a dark blue fabric and we're still using the swap color tool. Click on one of the small yellow squares and they'll all change at once for us. Let's color the border too. Click on one of the border sides to color it the dark blue. The swap color tool changed all uncolored patches in the quilt at once. Let's change the corner squares to the light blue. Click on the light blue again, then select the paintbrush tool and color each corner square to the light blue fabric. Now that we've filled the whole quilt with fabric, let's add it to the sketchbook again. On the left toolbar, click the Add to Project Sketchbook button. This time, EQ8 did not give us a warning message or ask us to name the project file. That's because we've already named this project, which you can see at the top of the screen, and we're just adding this quilt to an existing project file. Now let's take a look at some printing options. At the top of the screen, click the Print and Export tab and make sure that print is selected in the ribbon. First, let's take a look at a yardage estimate for this quilt. In the palette, click Yardage. Here, you can choose the width of fabric that you normally purchase and the seam allowance that you plan to use. Click the Preview button and you'll see the yardage estimate for this quilt. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. Click the zoom in button, and the way to zoom in EQ is to click and hold down your mouse button and drag a box around the items that you would like to see closer. When you release the mouse button, you'll be zoomed in on the area that you selected. So here in the yardage estimate, you can see the fabric swatches, the number of patches that use that fabric, and the yardage estimate. Because these are all fabrics that came from the EQ library, you'll also see the collection and designer names. Click the close button, and then click cancel in the print yardage window. Now let's take a look at the templates for an Ohio star block. First, click on one of the Ohio stars to select it. You'll see that it has a green outline showing that it's selected and the finished size will appear in a little box. In the palette on the left, click Templates. And here you'll see the Print Template window. We'll leave all of these settings to the defaults and click the Preview button. And here you can see the templates for this block. An Ohio star is just made up of squares and triangles. If I zoom in, Again, click and drag a box around what you'd like to zoom in on. You can see that each patch is labeled with a letter. And I will scroll down and you can see that these are the templates. The dotted lines are the seam allowance. So this is your finished square in the dark line and your seam allowance is shown with the dotted line. Click close and then close again. While we still have the Ohio Star block selected, let's take a look at the foundation pattern for this block. Over in the palette, click on Foundation. And in the Foundation window, you have the option to change the sectioning or the numbering, but we'll just leave it as defaults. Click the Preview button. And here you can see the foundation pattern for this Ohio Star block. You can move foundation sections on a page. Here I can get them to fit all on one page and then this blank page won't print. I'll zoom in again and here you can see that this is section A and each patch is numbered and lettered so you know the sewing order. I'm going to close the preview and close the print foundation window. Now let's take a look at a rotary cutting chart for one of the chain blocks. Click on the chain block to select it. 
Then click Rotary Cutting in the palette on the left. We'll leave these settings to the defaults and then click Preview. And here you'll see what the rotary cutting chart looks like for one of these chain blocks. Click Close to put the preview away and then close on the rotary cutting chart window. Before we end our lesson, let's take a look at the project sketchbook to see where our items have been saved. In the toolbar on the left, click the View Project Sketchbook button. It's the red notebook with glasses. The project sketchbook will open, and here you'll see I have the quilt section selected. Here's the last quilt that we saved, but you can see below that there are two quilts saved in this sketchbook. So if I use the scroll bar, I can see that first quilt that we also added to the sketchbook. There's also a section of the sketchbook for blocks, fabrics, colors, photos, thread, and embroidery. Every time you click the Add to Project Sketchbook button, the item will be saved in the appropriate section here in the Project Sketchbook. When you are done looking at the sketchbook, click the Close button. This was a quick lesson on how to design a basic quilt using the default blocks and fabrics that are in EQ8. Know that you can always add more blocks and more fabrics to your project as you design your quilts. Look for more lessons on our support site, the blog, and on our YouTube channel. And you can always contact our tech support team if you have any questions while using the software. Happy designing!